Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa. Welcome to Big Art Quest number three, all about acrylic brushes. Today we're going to be covering how to buy brushes, deals on brushes, how to wash brushes, kinds of brushes that you might, that there are and that you might want to use and what you'd use them for. So it's just kind of a simple, easy introduction to what somebody who's new to painting or recently back to painting might need to know about brushes. On the other mic today is my fabulous husband, John. He's going to be following me with the cameras and pulling up clips and helping us explain these brushes. We're going to try. He's going to try. I'm going to try. He's been doing research with me, so he's all brushed up too. <laughs> I'm a little, I am too. <laughs> so we're not going to cover uh, all the brushes around the world. There's a lot of brushes. When you go into the brush store, um, when you go into Hobby Lobby or Michael's or your local art store, or Texas Art Supply or Jerry's Artorama, you see the kind of rows and rows and rows and rows of brushes. And they have sizes and the sizes are crazy and they have shapes and the shapes are crazy. And you're just thinking to yourself... I just, I just need to economically pick some of these things out so I can paint a painting, right? Yep, now, pr pretty much. That, pr basically, that's all you want out of a brush. And right now, thanks to social painting and the way painting is having a renaissance in people's lives, a lot more people are getting interested oh, yeah. in painting. But, you know, the interesting thing is, is it doesn't necessarily have to be expensive. No. It can be. It can get crazy. Just like anything else us humans do. <laughs> it can get bananas. <laughs> this is true. It absolutely can. In researching, I think we saw a brush today with a 22 karat gold handle. Oh, uh, and a ferrule. A ferrule. That's yeah. right. The ferrule was 22 karat gold. Yeah. And I was like, and there's actually a reason for that, but it's just so funny. I'm just saying it gets up into that place. We yeah. use mink, 20, 22 karat gold Boar, ferrules. Boar's hair. So the brush. I'm going to pull up a brush here. We're going to pull out my favorite, the one I've been just so in love with lately, the one that we're calling Goldilocks. <laughs> Somebody wrote about Goldilocks to Simply Simmons. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I, I heard gonna, back. I think that's a rep brush or something weird. No. I, you know what? Actually, they all say Dom rep. So I, I think maybe it's just this is constantly sold out because it's the best brush. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what it is. It's the best brush. And the artists are figuring out and it's sold out. So in this, we've got the bristles, you have the ferrule, you have the crimp, and you have the handle. Mm -hmm. The bristles, right, which is the business end of your brush, are generally made with either natural fibers mm -hmm. or synthetic. Now, natural fibers are fantastic in oil and watercolor. But I really drill down into synthetic fibers for acrylic because acrylic is hard on your brushes. Yes. And a little science, <laughs> a little science <laughs> goes a long, long way. Brushes either have like a wood handle or a plastic handle. Um, personally, I find that um, I'm a little hard on the wood handles. Um, this nonsense tends to happen to me. When you just leave them in there, they, uh, yeah. they delaminate. The they lacquer. delaminate, and it's, it's kind of a whole thing. Now, see, if you treat your brushes properly, they, last they don't delaminate. They don't. But she leaves them soaking in the water where, you know, they... I have three kids. Yeah. I have a life. Somebody will scream, and I'll have brushes in water, and I'm going to run out. So I generally have to have brushes that are either so inexpensive when I purchase them, if I kill them, I'm not upset, or are hardy enough to survive me. I especially love when a brush is inexpensive and hardy. That's my favorite. And that has been until recently pretty hard to find. Yeah. And that's, that's how you've come to where you're at. <laughs> that's where I've come to where I'm at. Because, you know, in my past, I bought the top of the brush lines. Mm -hmm. Like the Da Vinci's and, the, and the, all the stuff, the satin silvers, ruby satin silvers, and all the handmade, like, crazy brushes. And you killed them. And you killed them. I really honestly, like, if, if my mom and I can't kill a brush, it's like, <laughs> it's pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> so when you're out shopping for brushes, you really need to get your budget in mind ahead of time. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I really want you to think about when you're shopping for brushes, wherever you are in the world, find a company that's been open more than a minute. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Seriously. You need somebody that's going to answer their customer service line. I want you to find a company that has a website with more information about how they make their brushes. Mm -hmm. And I want you to find a company that likely has some YouTube videos. Yeah. yeah. If they have all of that, right, and this is wherever you live, 
If they have all of that, they're probably going to be inclined to help you. There are some real fly-by-night brush companies. Um, I didn't realize this until I got on YouTube because people will um, try to send you art materials to review them. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I mean, I like I had some markers sent to me, some chalk markers. Yeah. I couldn't even review. Them. No. I was like, uh, I won't say anything like I won't ever run anybody's brand down ever. But like some stuff isn't going to make it on the show because I'm like, mm. didn't work out. It didn't work out. And so I've kind of noticed that uh, with brushes, too. So I do sometimes see stuff that you don't see. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. Yeah, just we just want to make sure that you know all this stuff works for you guys. Yeah, because you're at home. So here's the number one thing, and this is the shocking thing. Number one thing you need to know about brushes, mm. unless you know the make and model of your brush, you cannot buy it online. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, guys, that's actually true. Until you know the exact brush from the exact company in the exact size, you cannot buy your brushes online, period. And not even from the same company, same line. Mm -hmm. I know that's upsetting news. Wow. Yeah, but it's that is the truth about brush buying because what happens is, is that you have to touch a brush. Yeah. You have to feel a brush to buy it because an acrylic brush has to be, and this is a crazy science, but it works. Um, if it would make a lovely makeup brush, like this one right here, if I had felt this without the sizing, see, it's lovely to brush on my cheek. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a terrible acrylic brush. <laughs> <laughs> it's too soft. It's terrible. It's too soft. If I could use it for makeup and make makeup tutorials with it, if this just feels lovely and you'll want to take it home because you're like, oh, this is so nice. Mm -hmm. Don't take this brush home. It shouldn't be hard enough to take rust off your husband's car. That would be too hard. <laughs> but it should be uncomfortable to your skin because a good brush needs to pull a bead of paint off your little paint plop, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We talk about that all the time in the show. Pull a bead of paint. It needs to be able to work that paint into your canvas. Now, my very favorite brush I've been using lately, which is this number 10 Bright by Simply Simmons. And this is part of the Robert Simmons line. Yeah. Right? So this is a big time, long time established company. I think they're 200 years. It's like over 200 years. Yeah. So they've been around. They got a website. They got YouTube videos, right? All the products I ever talk about on here have a website and YouTube videos and somebody backing their product. Okay. okay. You know, this is what tripped me out about mm. these brushes. So th you, know, you you love these brushes. I do. I'm like, I'm the more I'm using them, the more I'm becoming a fan. I'm By the way, I'm not paid, you guys, yeah, at no, all. You know, but what, this is just what I've found. But what's really cool is that, you know, there they, there they are right there. Mm -hmm. These are like, they're these are the baseline professional brushes. Like they 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 go up from here. They're two dollars and eighty five cents per brush at Texas Art Supply. Yeah, you can't. Th those are as a smoking deal. And here's what I'll say: from a, I've never picked up one of these brushes. Mm -hmm. I've, that number ten has been around a lot longer than the other brushes that you buy all the time. Yeah, I stole it from my mom. She actually did get it from a Simply Simmons rep that was coming by Jerry's Artorama explaining yeah. why their brushes were good. We hadn't used them as a family, and she grabbed a grip and dropped some with me to try. And I was like, what is this? This is so good. Yeah. So actually, I've been kind of changing my brush loyalties as of late. But here's the thing. Sometimes you're in a place you can't get a line of brushes. So what I want you to think about on acrylic brushes, what are the features that you would want? I want in an acrylic brush, I'm going to show you this, is a three-quarter inch wash. Yep. Right? Now, this is a synthetic fiber. You want a synthetic fiber. I don't know. Can we hear the flick? Yeah. See, Mo Cuts was just asking about that, right? Um, uh, that She said that uh, she was having some trouble getting the bead of paint that you get. And it's the, that, it's the softness of the brush? It's the softness of the brush. And in the store, they put the stuff called sizing in the brush. It's like starch. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you go in the store, you're going to have to pick up your brush. You say, all right, I need a three-quarter inch. This is a wash, right, which means it's going to pull a little more fluid into it to make nice, flat strokes. It's kind of a cousin to a bright, mm -hmm. right? Everything's a flat, and then there's washes and brights. And then it's about brush length and the brush density and the interlocking that's happening in here. So flick it. Flick all the sizing out. You pick the brush up. They're going to not like it at the art store, but flick it out. Get it so that it's, I go like this. John, see me do this. I'm like, yep. ah. Yep, yep. Once I have it out, I feel it. 
I feel the spring. You'll hear good brush makers. Brush makers are like diamond cutters. Mm -hmm. So like that's Simply Simmons is Robert Simmons. He's a brush maker. Really good brush companies, all of them have a brush maker. And just like a diamond cutter, there's somebody who specializes in the craftsmanship of making these brushes. Mm -hmm. And there's some real science to this, how this sits on your hand and oh, does yeah. not cause you problems. I like short handles. See, this is a short handle. Mm -hmm. This is a long handle. Yeah. I don't get any longer than this. It annoys me. Yeah. I don't suggest you get any longer than this. It's annoying. You poke yourself in the eye. It's really, it's for when people want to be all like, I'm back here painting on my canvas. None of us are painting like that. Mm -hmm. So it's a pointless tool. Hopefully that's helpful. Flick it out feel it and if you're like it, it shouldn't hurt but it should be like i would not really want to put my makeup on with this it, yeah. it's just a little too too fort as yeah. the french would say it's a little too fort and you'll feel it it will look this just took some makeup right off my face <laughs> <laughs> I'm just it gathering did some it took, because there's a bunch of questions coming up so I'm just okay. gathering. that's the only reason why i'm a little no 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 you pay the, attention uh, to that you can have metal allergies to your brushes Oh, really? Yes. Some of these are made with products. That's the other reason why I'm like, watch the brush company you're buying from. Some of them are made with products you can have a real allergy to. Mm -hmm. Nickel. Oh, really? Yeah, all kinds of craziness. Huh. So that's why some of these companies are that are good companies are kind of like, we make brushes like this because they know there's some companies out there that will cause you to get hives all over your body. I don't know if any of you have had that experience yet, but I know people who have, and you can have an allergic reaction to your brush huh just uh, weird thing I would, I would say like that would be a crazy like if you've had a, a crazy reaction to other things probably keep that in mind mm -hmm. but you know I don't think they read about the metal allergies brushes get big yeah I guess that's true if you're hanging <laughs> on to that ferrule all the time then <laughs> you gotta be careful brush. that's a crazy big brush now this is round is this a detail round no, but it is around. Okay, so, yeah, I, I, I missed who was asking it, but some, uh, someone was asking that they were struggling with thin lines. Mm -hmm. And she said she's got six brushes, inexpensive and cheap, and all of them are useless. Yeah. What brush should she get um, to make those nice, thin... A detail round. Can you show us so a good So, what we're going to do is I'm going I'm to show you some detail rounds. Here's a, here's a nice detail round. Yeah. Okay, see how that comes to a sharp point? I wouldn't get any bigger than that if you're talking about thin lines. If you have a very good bright, I'm going to show you a very good bright. See this bright right here? Look at the sharpness of that You may want to show it down on the other camera, too. Oh, is there another? Where's that? Oh. Yeah. Can you see the sharpness of that point? Yeah. You can get a good line from that, okay? Brushes are going to come in. We like to talk about it. Here's a filbert. Here's a filbert. This is a long-haired filbert. What I mean by long-haired? Its bristles are just a little bit longer. Yeah. Okay. But this still has a really good flick. This is a number six Simply Simmons filbert. This is a good filbert. It's a good filbert. And it's going to give you some nice little blended strokes. Uh, one of my favorite art instructors out there, William Kemp, says a very interesting thing. If you could only have one brush to paint with acrylic paint... He'd paint a bright, and if he only had one brush to paint oils, he'd paint a filbert. I don't know why we're in a one-brush scenario, but it's an interesting <laughs> thing. I don't know what happened up at Williams Land that it's one brush, but that's kind of <laughs> awesome. What, what? How artists think? If I only had one brush and two colors of paint, what would they be? Right. You know, just like if somehow you're trapped on a desert island and only this floated up on shore. Right. And I and I think there's something to be said about that. You can pretty much do anything with a bright. You can get thin lines. You can get all kinds of strokes. We're going to talk about the strokes on the episode we call The Stroke. Yeah, and, and so you got to have, you need a bright. Mm -hmm. You need a bright. I like this one inch bright. I like to then add to my one inch bright a half inch. Mm -hmm. This actually says half inch. <laughs> Wash and flats will have longer bristles in general, right? Here we yep. go. Here's my number four. This is my number four bright. You know it's mine because it's got paint on it. Because when I wash it, I don't get the paint off. See my number four <laughs> yeah. bright? It's a fabulous little bright. And then <laughs> here is a number two shader, which is really essentially the same shape as bright. Can you guys see the? Yep. 
that's a fantastic detail. When I'm doing eye work, I'm I'm in this with this brush. I love this brush, right? I think this company does a really good half inch angle. If you're painting with Clive and you're painting with Pandora and you're painting with my mom no, and you're painting with me, you need a half inch angle, guys. Oh yeah. Because we all use them. This is this is the uh, multi purpose brush, half inch angle shader. Um, so you've got fans, you've got points, you've got washes, you've got flats. People say you need a flat or a bright. What's the difference between a flat or a bright? Does anybody know? Uh, no, I don't. It's just bristle length. Oh. Brights tend to have a shorter bristle, and sometimes a company will trim their edges a little bit. But they're both basically a flat. That means the ferrule has been squished. Ah. Flat. It's not round like in a round. Washes are for exactly what they say they are, making washes, which is fantastic in uh, watercolor painting and not useful all the time in acrylic because mm -hmm. you don't want to underbind your paint. So at the point you're doing washes, you probably have a bunch of, because you've got, then you've got, you know, medium for making washes because you want your paint to stick to the canvas and you're, you're into some specialty tools. You'll be that person by the end of the year, by the way. Yeah. Okay. So Angela, oh sorry. I was yeah, I was just saying. I was, Angela Anderson was here earlier talking about that she kills brushes, and I was just trying to chat, ask her in chat what her favorite brush was. Oh. But I don't think that she caught it. Well, I know. I'm going to show one. I've got a couple of these. This is a pack I found. I found these packs. Yeah. These weird little packs. Actually, at, somebody um, was asking about that too. All right. Uh, so these little packs. I got these at Michael's. I'm going to open this little pack. How so do you like those? Because uh, Eve was asking about what what are good packs. You know, so like right now I'm feeling this. Here it is. This is a deer foot stippler. Angela talks about this a lot. Yeah. This um this is Royal and Nickel Deer Foot Stippler. It's still it's it's this is really soft. I don't know what you'd stipple with this. I yeah. could put makeup on with this. And that's that's the problem I had with the packs, is you can't open the packs and feel them. Yeah. This, however, is a natural this is the hog's hair bristles. Hog's hair bristles um, are perfectly okay. They just require a little more care. And by the way, don't panic when your uh, brushes stain. They all stain. The stain is interlocked into the fibers and will not get onto your canvas. This is a very interesting, you could make a little cloud with this little puff. So this huh. guy is kind of okay. Um, and these two little humdingers. So there's in brushes, there's all these sort of like, I don't know, I like to call them technique heavy brushes. Yeah. Right? So these brushes right here are technique heavy brushes. These are grass and trees. Oh, cool. If you're just really struggling with those things and you just need something to make that for you, right? Yep. These two are actually pretty good. So this brush kit overall, and it was inexpensive, is the Artist Laugh Specialty Brush Set. Yep. It was okay if you just wanted some toys. Now... <laughs> I don't know. I say like, but that's not your everyday brushes. Your everyday brushes, I always try to have listed in the bottom where I say you've got to have the. the I always have it in the description, the list of brushes. That's what I'm saying is your basic kit that you should have on hand. Okay, so this there's there's a lot of questions around. Okay, this. I so, got answers. Okay, to pack or not to pack seems to be the question. Oh, okay. If you really, 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 really know the company, pack away. If you don't know the company, don't pack touch you have to go to the art store and touch you cannot believe the variety even in a single line of brushes that you'll feel these things are handmade how many craftsmen did that info uh that commercial that commercial but that that information segment we're watching information on the different brushes we're watching oh. the dollar and rally robert oh, simmons yeah, there's yeah. 12 craftsmen oh and, yeah, yeah well, for other for their oh, so yeah on the dollar and rally they own their own factory and like on, uh, and that's what I found was kind of cool was that like twelve. It's average of like twelve craftsmen touch each brush that they make. Yeah. And they they have a lifetime warranty on them, so it's kind of like well, well, crazy. Most of the companies that I would recommend to you will have a factory and will have craftsmen yeah. and will have a designer. So they they know brushes and there's so that's like, yeah. There's stuff about brushes that we we don't even remotely consider. It. Just like in the paints, it's like golden with paints. They just. They know paint. They know paint. And, and they there's know stuff grades. about Yeah, they know they know stuff about paint we don't even consider about our paint that makes a paint great. But right. Yeah. Like this little this little sucker here, right? This is a fifty dollar brush. Yeah. Right? Um, same brush in the Simply Simmons I noticed was like eighteen, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so there's some difference. Look at this. That's a crazy thing. Yep. we we played with this. These are specialty splatters. I have two of these suckers. They're each built differently. I don't know where my other specialty splatter is, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's the deal. You can get uh, the micro minis. 
Ah, yes. Is that what you stole of mine? Yeah, and look what I've done to the... Oh, my gosh. It's so terrible. That, I used to use that to paint miniatures. Okay. It was This here would not be a good brush. brush set for you guys to get. I grabbed it because it had a deer foot stippler in it. And I really like this um, one here for this like little feathered stroke. Mm -hmm. But this brush and this brush, even though this is a fan brush, and you think to yourself, oh, that's like what Bob used. That's good. No, Bob's brush was better. The uh, most... Pretty much 99% of the fans I see out there are just junk. Now, that's They're a good question. terrible fans. I hate them, which is why I don't use them on the show. So we like we love Bob. Why not run out and grab a set of Bob brushes? Uh, his brushes are made for oil painting. Ah. But he has the best palette knives. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that's, that's right. That's right. You always are using the Bob palette knives. Yeah. And actually, I have the Dollar and Rally palette knives, and I have the Bob palette knives, and I just really like a good palette knife. Palette yeah. knife matters. And we're going to cover the knife. That's a, that's a quest. Yeah. The knife is a quest. We'll, we'll go back over that later. So um, you just got to have that list I have down there, which is the inch. You want an inch bright, inch filbert, half inch bright, half inch filbert. If you can get it, go ahead and get the detail quarter inch or smaller filberts and right. brights or shaders. Get an angle brush and get a couple sizes of rounds, which means, guys, that you're going to want, you know, let's see if I've got anything still in any kind of condition. Why? <laughs> right. So you want some 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 sizes of some rounds so you have some sizes of some rounds here mm -hmm. get some sizes of some rounds i'm not recommending any of these and they're all in perfect condition i bought these on sale you know how i talk about that sale that's yep. like a half off and everything's like a, like a few dollars and did not flick the sizing out of them mm. happens to any of us you get excited you like a company you don't flick out the sizing and then what happens no you have brushes you don't use can you put the they're sizing? very pretty in the cup can you put the sizing back in Mm -hmm. There's there's actually brush conditioner. So let's go to washing brushes. How do you wash your acrylic brushes? Oh, I have more questions too. Mm. But we're gonna come okay. back to those. All right. So are we are we go on to br washing brushes right now? Wait, we can answer a question before we wash brushes. Questions? So th this is actually interesting because uh, so Angela was saying that she likes a number four round, a three eighths angle, and a good one inch flat liner. Right? Fantastic so list. The, the, the second two are very specific. Those are a, a three eighths and a number one. Mm -hmm. But the first one is a number four round. Yeah. How Can you talk about those numbers and the, how those numbers relate to each <sighs> other? And, and I don't know if Angela's noticed this. My mom and I are so frustrated with this. So because it's like the Wild West out there in brushes, there are companies that have been around forever and they try to think up a sensible reason how they're numbering and sizing their brushes. Mm -hmm. And then there's just new dog and pony shows that show up. They're having some newfangled brush, and sometimes it's brilliant, sometimes it's not. But they all just kind of seem to size their stuff willy-nilly. So it's why sometimes teachers like Angela and I will show you, like, that QVC version of the brush where we give you some size relationships. So you'd be like, number four should look like this. Because sometimes a number four in one brush line will look completely different than a number four in another brush line. Yeah. In some psychotic brush lines, it's different per series of brush. So <laughs> that makes me really crazy. Like on the first entry level series, they're all sized like this. But on their pro series, the numbers mean something completely different. And I'm like, what is happening? Your brain is breaking. Yeah, I did a, I did a, I'm, I'm, my brain is breaking. I did a periscope just to show this off. I was like, here's my rant. This is why I'm just at a random Michaels. And here's how it is. And this is why. You can't. And then the feeling when I had everybody at the, the thing with me. Um, oh, I should have grabbed some, some clips of that. Yeah, I when I had everybody at Texas Art Supply with me, the best thing about it was being able to pull brushes, feel them, and go, this is bad, and this is why, this is great, and this is why, because there's nothing like feeling it. But you want something stiff and sharp enough to pull a bead. You want to fill, even your filbert should have enough pull to pull a little bead of paint. And if it's not, the brush is too soft. Brushes that are for multi purpose. Okay. okay. Some brushes will say they are multi-purpose, and in some lines that is okay to buy. Like I had Simply, Simply Simmons says that, and I haven't had any problem with it. I love them, right? I have seen multi-purpose brushes be horrible. Mm -hmm. I don't know what multi-purpose they have, but it's horrible, and I would never, ever, 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 ever recommend them to you. So that's when we go back to, is it a company that has a website, is an established business, has a artisan brush maker that's designing their brushes? Do they have extra material? Are they bragging? That's always good. Now, all of them brag, but you can kind of tell the difference between the brag of like, 
we're master diamond cutters since 1776 is a completely different brag than, you know, some of these new guys that just sort of copy pasted everybody else's. Yeah. Because that happens. It is the Wild West out there. That's why we're going to the art material show. Yep. Right? So companies that you can trust have been around a minute. Mm -hmm. You want them to be around. Like, I think one of the most expensive brushes in the world is a Winsor Newton Sable. It's made from mink. It was given to the queen. It's like a whole thing. Yeah. Chances are that uh, they have somebody up on a help desk that can talk to you if your watercolor brush breaks. Oh, the Robert Simmons? Weren't they guaranteed for life? There's a good sign. If they'll guarantee the brush for life. Yeah, I don't think the, the Simply Simmons is. No, but, but I every haven't broke other, one yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't broke one yet, so I'm not that worried about it. They have, I've gotten my money out of it. I have, you know, I'm just starting now to wear the brushes out, and you know how heavily I work my brushes. Yeah, that's why yeah. I was, that's why I was like, I felt good about that. I was like, yeah, those are pretty awesome. If they're willing to stand behind something for life, it's a good thing, because you know what can happen? I don't know if I have any here. I can pop these ferrules right off on some of them. Some oh, yeah, of them I, I have just, just well, done in but, scrubber. Yeah. Here's a scrubber. This is, can we hear this? Yep. Can you hear that? See how stiff that is? This is literally a scrubber. It is, you would, this almost, this hurts. That's this could take paint, maybe rust off a thing, but this does some nice little scrumbling. If you need to get in there and scrumble it, yeah, yeah. Judy scrumble. Wants to know, Judy wants to know, if are you using uh, the regular, the Simply Simon regular oil acrylic or the extra firm? Extra firm. Extra firm. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. That's good enough. So you, you want to show us your, your, you had some brush washing? Yes. Let's Did show the brush washing. Let's talk about how we wash these things. Okay. So okay. I'll, let's, let's roll that beautiful washing footage. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to get your water on. Uh, you don't want it to be extremely hot, right? But I don't like it to be extremely cold because I want to be able to get the acrylic paint out. I want to open up the polymers. Uh -huh. Now I'm using Dawn right there. I just wanted to share that with you because Dawn works. <laughs> yeah. It's not great for natural hair bristles, right? But, you know, if you're in a pinch, it's an acceptable thing. Sometimes it's a dollar, and you might not want to spend money on specialty soap. Now, I'm wringing the water out of this brush, and I'm reshaping it with my hand. I'm putting it back in its shape, yeah. and I'm going to dry it flat. That is a do. Reshape the brush, pull the excess water out gently with your hand, reshape it to its original intended shape. Now there I'm using my specialty soap. This is by the pencil company. It's master soap. Uh, it comes in a tub and it comes in these bars and it has conditioners in it. Now, if you can see this, I had, um, no, no, back to the clip, John. Yep. Pretty good. There it is. Okay. <laughs> I'm working my nail through the bottom because I've gotten paint up into the ferrule. This opens up the bristles and throws off the shape of the brush. Gotcha. This is about um, some bad brush management. That's how you get that. So I'm going to pull one here. I've got my little, my happy, happy. Now, you can scrub all the paint off. You can clean these as, you know, I wouldn't clean them too gently. This is acrylic paint. I always work my fingers, see, because I'm trying to get the paint that's hiding out in the brush. Yeah. Squeeze it out, reshape it to its point, lay it flat. I'm gonna, I think I'm about to wash a point here. And I kind of change up my washing technique on the point. So I kind of get the excess paint out, swirly, swirly, swirly. I like to swirl points back and forth with brights and flats, but I swirl a point. I'm a little carefuler with how I pull through the brush. Pull it to a point. You can actually, at this stage, add those crazy brush conditioners. Like if you've spent $160 on a brush, you're probably going to uh, have a whole longer brush washing routine than what I have. Here's a big brush. I just get them, get them, get them. This is natural bristles. See, I'm just working it. So I'm deep with the soap into the brush. I'm, my fingers are pulling through the bristles. I'm making sure that the stuff is out. Now, if anything's in the ferrule, do you do you just work that out? You just keep working it out. You really want to get it out if you can. Yeah, just work it out as much as possible. As much as possible, because that's that's the biggest thing that's going to start damaging your brushes um, post during the rest date. Dry them flat on a towel. The other nice thing about the towels, you can see if you got the paint out because it will bleed out a color if you didn't and give you a second chance to kind of fix that if you miss that. Things I do wrong, things I do that you should never do. <laughs> I leave my brushes in water. Yeah. 
I don't rest them. Most acrylic artists uh, will have a brush rest. They're a couple bucks at the store and they have little grooves and you kind of rinse them and dry them and rest them. You may have noticed that I'm kind of scooting along in a painting. I just don't feel like I have time. <laughs> and they sit in the water, bristles down, and that does open up the bristles. That does shorten the length of your brush life. Again, yep. that's why I buy cheap. Your brushes are a casual cheap. $2.85, I can let that brush have its moment. Couple yeah. bucks at twenty two dollars, then I got to be all mental. Yeah, right. So then that brush has to last so long that I get my money back. Yeah, right. Because I, I have this sort of internal feeling like I need to get so many paintings done from a brush. Mm -hmm. I should actually create that formula. <laughs> like I should mark that. Like when do I feel like I got my money out of a brush? What do you do if you ruin a brush? What if what what happens if you left the paint in and it dried? I never do that, but if you did. You turn it into the stick that you use for other things. You can. Other thing that you can do is you can soak it in Murphy's oil soap overnight. We'll oh. sometimes get it out. Oh, really? Mm hmm But here's the thing. Rubbing alcohol. This one, 91%. Yeah. Rubbing alcohol breaks down the polymers in acrylic paint. It breaks it down. It will take it off your brushes. It will take it off your nails. It will take it off your clothes. It will take it out of your floor. This, like, you've got to have a bottle around of this if you're painting with acrylic anyways, just to get it off of everything. Now, if you have those gel shellac nails like I have, mm -hmm. you can use acetone to get this to get it off. But if you don't, then you're going to have to use this. Someone posted this up, and it's true, and I'm going to explain why it's true. Is Now, I have Unicorn Farts <laughs> OCD Hand Sanitizer <laughs> by the Fortune Cookie Soap Company. If you guys watch Graveyard Girl, you know why I have that. <laughs> Because I saw her reviewing that company and I was like, that's the funniest thing I've ever seen. And I went and bought everything. <laughs> so I'm so completely influenced by YouTube. YouTube said go buy unicorn farts. And I did. There's matching soap and shower gel and everything. And my daughter like had unicorn fart hair for <laughs> months and months. But any hand sanitizer will work. Because what is hand san sanitizer basically, John? It's alcohol. It's alcohol. Yeah. So you just put it in a cup and leave it. It will... I mean, like, I don't know, cured for a week, but, like, if it's just gone stiff but it hasn't set, you might save that brush. Now, we... You might. Yeah. Now, we actually have some stuff that I've used to take you take paint, dried paint out of clothes. Yeah. Yes. There's, there's like, some oops all out, and yeah. there's a couple of products at Home Depot that yeah. you look at them kind of like, wow, they say that they'll get... They do, though. They do. They do. It's about breaking down the polymers of the paint, right? Yeah. So you don't need every brush on the planet. You just need that grip of brushes. Um, you guys always get excited about like a sword brush. There is, there's rubber brushes, there's spatulas, there's all kinds of things. But what you need is a series of brushes that get paint on the canvas in sizes that give you control. So you, you're going to need that one inch if you're painting anything 16 by 20, right? Or bigger. And you may need to go bigger. If The bigger uh, your canvas, the bigger your brush. Smaller canvas, smaller brush that you can get away with. Oh, no, that, that, someone was asking about that. Hold on just a second. Let me make, okay. a, make a note here uh, for Danielle that I'll ask her question in a second. So uh, on brush sizes, so mm -hmm. let's say that you're going to use some arbitrary sized brush number. We'll just call it, let's say, a three, let's say you're going to use a half inch brush okay. on a 16 by 20. Yeah. When you scale that up to a 20 by 30, do you need to scale your brush up to a three quarter inch or half or, or, or I would inch? probably scale, scale it up to a one inch. Yeah, so it's a good angle. Idea like if I if I'm doing I'm doing this. This is a five eighths, uh -huh. right? Um, I would probably go up to the next size any bigger than this canvas. Oh, here's my other. Here's my other thing. Show you my other thing. Yeah. All right, there's a there's an abused palette knife that has uh, <laughs> been my mom's for like ever, and now is mine. <laughs> heirloom palette knives because what are you going to do this thing what you're going to do is you're going to break down the glue and pull the blade out is what you're going to do i haven't done that to this yet but it's thinking about it here's the bigger splatter see there's always some fangly is it better than a toothbrush right not after we looked at the space thing is it half inch angle gotta have one gotta have one wow did you hear that i did i heard the storm that was thunder. so you know, that's what you want to you think about. You don't have to have all the brushes on the planet. You just need to have enough brushes. Now, yeah, you look at me and I'm like, I got all these brushes. Most of them are just ex are decorative. Look, here's the stain on this. So this is a mix of synthetic and natural fibers. And they stain. And that's okay. You, I mean, like you got like a 
couple dozen brushes that you actually use, but a lot of these are just ones that you've killed that we're kind of hanging out with. I know, because I keep thinking I might use it for something. But you, like, use the same... This brush here, it's too soft. Look, I can't even, you can barely hear it in that thing. So now, nice on my face. I just wish I'd pull the sizing out of it. Pull the sizing out. So, uh, Danielle pull has it a out. question here. Okay. I've got, I've got, I've got like, a, a couple questions here. I'm, have, I'm here to answer brush questions. We're questing, questers. So, Danielle brought, uh, bought a new Ebony Splendor brush mm. and has only used it a few times. And now when she's painting, the edges of the bristles are spreading out and it's hard to make a crisp line. Mm. Is she cleaning it wrong? Yeah. That's, that's what it is. It's, it's the paint is getting into the ferrule mm -hmm. and it's opening it up. It's just causing those bristles to fray out a bit. Yeah. You can try um, doing an, uh, the hand sanitizer soak or an alcohol soak so you can get the paint out. You can try. Um, oh, one, one good cheap thing is like I've seen people leave the soap in the brush. They use the soap as sizing. I've done that too because mm. soap will dry hard. Oh, yeah. So you do the soap, and then instead of rinsing it out, just squeeze, like, get the paint all the way out. Get the paint all the way out. Then on the last thing, when you normally be squeezing out and resizing it and putting it down, get the soap on it, squeeze the excess soap out, shape it, and put it down, and it will size it. Huh. I imagine that takes some experimenting. No, it's just something you figure out you can do when you when you go paint somewhere else and you realize you didn't bring, you know, because, like, there's this stage in art where you have, like, every single possible ad addition. <laughs> and then you start traveling with your stuff, and then you realize that you've forgotten five things. <laughs> and you're like, how can I resize these brushes? Oh, I don't have one here, and I meant to have one. My favorite way to carry brushes. There's all kinds of wonderful beautiful packs and rolls and things that you can put brushes in but my very favorite idea i've ever seen was an empty reynolds wrap box with a rubber band around it mm. have you you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah that's a really great way to carry brushes just in case i might show make a video out yeah. of that we could just put a little foam in the, in the tip of the back and then boom, mm -hmm. you got you're good to go you're good to go. You never, ever want to put your brushes, obviously, down in the cup. Which you do all the time. No, I mean even the dry cup. Oh, yeah. No. Don't dry your brushes in a cup. That No, you don't do that. You, leave you saw me laying flat on the towel, laying flat on the towel. Okay. Is there more fussy, correct, archival ways to care for your brushes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but that's not what this is about. <laughs> this is about, can I get these things clean? Can I keep them in shape long enough for them to be a good brush for me over time? Like, I can show you what happens if you don't reshape your brush. This happens. Right? So this is, you can kind of see that just, it's just, uh, I think I'm this, I think my mom and I are the story that brushes tell their baby brush children that what happens to them if they're bad, they go to live in my studio. Because mm. <laughs> I'm a little hard on them. Now, I could resize that, though, and probably get it back. I could. Gotcha. I could resize it and get it back. So you think that so, so, so sometimes resizing will bring, bring it back? Yeah, sometimes. I think sometimes resizing will bring it back. There's really, I mean, that's just sort of the basics of your brushes. You just need that grip of brushes. I'm going to look for, um, I'm going to try to figure out some exact brands. And when we get the blog posting function going... Mm -hmm. When that happens, I think I'm going to start, like, say, this is the six. Yeah. Right? That you can just get for sure. The problem is, is, like, YouTube's global, so I know there are people all over the world who can't get the products I'm demoing. Yeah. So that's why I'm, I'm like, trying to give you that description of what is it, short handle, short bristles. Yeah. And not a nice makeup brush. And we'll work on that, you know, in the in the in the in the, in the coming months, is to see what we can do to try to find uh, good links to suppliers that you guys can get this stuff around the world. So I have a great ginger tip for them. Oh yeah. Yeah, my mom ginger wanted me to share a tip with you. If you have bought cheap brushes, you had a moment of weakness, you saw a deal, it was in a pack, and you brought them. Vigorously wash them before using them. Hmm. Vigorously. Vigorously vigorously to try to pull out the loose bristles because one of the biggest problems of a cheap non off-brand company is all the bristles fall out on your canvas mm. now mom likes to say but then it proves it's not a print but some people are not okay with the hairy canvas <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what do you think about cutting and shaping your own your old brushes i would say that i have never done it yeah. i am uh, and that's 
I mean, like, have I ever made a brush? Yes, I've made a brush. I had to do that in art school. So in that sense, I have. In the sense that do I cut and shape a brush? Um, I am not that precision person. There are really good videos on that. And you can do it. And But yeah. I'm not that person. Just <laughs> I just it. go buy a good new cheap brush. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do. But that you can cut them. Yeah. I can't. Oh, yeah. So, so uh, you know, I as, as I just sit watching the Sherpa as her partner, I mean... <laughs> I'd say that you know brushes are a tool, so go find go find one that works for you and use it. And then when you need to replace it, replace that tool, and and don't be afraid of uh, 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 or think too much about it. You know, don't try to you know obsess and save too much. Find a good working one and just paint. Yeah, with it. the best brush on the market is not the most expensive. I have fallen into the most expensive hole, and that did not make me happy, and it just made me mad at that brush. Mm -hmm. So now what my formula is, is something all these brushes have in common in my studio that you're seeing. None of them are more than $5. Yeah. And, and we've found, we found some good brushes at Walmart. You just have to kind of dig through them. Right? You have to feel them. Yeah. Right? You want to know the bristles are not going to come out. You're going to want to know that the ferrule is not going to fall off. You're going to want to know that the sizing isn't making it stiff. Yeah. Because the minute you get your brush wet, it's going to go soft. And remember, however stiff it feels in the store, it's going to be a little softer when it's wet. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. And so you got to feel them. And keep in mind, you know, sometimes buying things at the local retailer, you're paying for convenience. So if you can wait a little longer and you can order online, you can get something for the yeah, same price. Yeah, but then you can't but feel them. Yeah. No, but when you know. When you when know, you know your when brush. When you know your brush. You know the make, model, everything about the specs. Yeah. So you know the exact brush you buy. Yeah. This only works from a big company. This doesn't work by for fly by net companies because they'll literally be different per manufacturing run. Yeah. yeah, that happens. Like you'll get a great brush from some off brand company and you think, oh my gosh, I've discovered the motherland of cheap, free, great brushes, mm -hmm. right? And then the next run of brushes, they make all the bristles fall out and you're like, what? No. Yeah. You, have to, you have to build a relationship to the company you're buying from. You're just going to have to. And you're going to have to get to know them as a company, and you want to see consistent manufacturing from them. Yeah. Right? Even though I'm spending, this is why, so I've been dealing with these for a while before I've even been willing to talk to you guys about them. Because I need to make sure this didn't fall off. I need to make sure these didn't fall out. I need to make sure that this thing, when I scrambled with it, which I shouldn't do, should have a dedicated scrambling brush, but that it kind of held its shape. I needed to make sure that I wasn't popping. Oh, my goodness. That this thing hasn't popped is a miracle. It's, so, it's solid this, acrylic. This is like the Volvo now. <laughs> well, it's, it, uh, it's, it's, that one's a solid acrylic. Yeah. yeah. So, but uh, I mean, that I haven't, yeah, and I need that because I have three kids and I'm going to run out. And at 285, it fits my needs because that was 285 at, um, Texas. I think it's Mr. Art in Texas, Texas. And I'm not, you'll have to check Jerry's and Dip look for what it is there. But I, I, I think they have these. Nationally, I don't. I don't think that the Simply Simmons is out of North America, but I do believe this brush line by Robert Simmons is. Yeah. I would like to try the twenty-two karat gold. <laughs> I thought that was just so cool. I was I was like, like, yeah, I, I don't. What? I don't know that you'd paint. I mean, like, I I would paint a picture of that paintbrush. It's not like you know. It's like, can we use it for a for a centerpiece of it's like a still it's life? It's for my show painting when I'm showing and I'm painting, my darling. I have my show paintings and my glitter and my bling. So, um, I'm so, sure, I hope you're laughing at home. Oh, we do. A no, no, oh, couple questions though. Mm. Okay, so you had those extra soft brushes that you pulled out earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, so would those be good for varnishing? Yes. Oh, thank you. Remind me of the last thing. Varnishing. You have to have a dedicated varnishing brush. You do. Yeah. You can't mix them. No. And the softer the brush for varnishing, the better. Because if you use a stiff brush for varnishing, you get ripples. Thank you. Oh. John, thank you. This is why he's my partner. Because then I'd have to come back and make a whole nother. And we're going to talk about the varnish. But here I want to say this to you. Now, most companies have a beautiful thin. It's a flat. It's long. It's thin. Um, I don't have one. I just tend to use my softest brush. But I, I get away with a lot of murder on varnishing. Mm -hmm. Um but you want a pretty wide, flat, thin varnishing brush because you want it to leave no brush strokes. Mm. None. Because even if you're going across and then you're going like this or you're doing what my mom does, which is you try to keep track of where you varnished and directionally varnish. If you get the, if, especially in the gel medium and varnish, if you, if you have a very, if you put it on thick and then you use a stiff brush, you're going to get grooves. 
Yeah. Which, interestingly enough, is how they sell jaclets when they're like, it's an embellished jaclet. That's just varnish <laughs> on a print. Let's be honest, guys. That's varnish on a print. Yep. Sorry, jaclet companies. That's what that <laughs> is. <laughs> you printed something with your big format printer, and then you put some varnish on it. I do that at home. Well, all right. So... <laughs> Fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> so, so Sarah, what? So Sarah is, is, is she's cleaning her brushes right now, and okay. she's like, John, John, I got, I gotta know. Bill, alcohol dry out my brushes. She's, she's, she's like, right now, brush, washing. Don't do it every day. Do it when you need it. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Dry out your brushes. It does not condition them. Would you put alcohol in your hair every day? No. But if you got a whole ton of paint in it and you couldn't get it out, you might just do it that one time. Yeah. Right? There's things we do on our hair like that one time. Right. So to get that out of there. And some people really like using um, hair shampoo. Huh. I, I don't know that that's necessary, I've, but I've known people who are like mane and tail. Now, as another interesting note, alcohol will unbond super glue. Yeah. So just keep that in note. Yeah. This is really, you're going to throw the brush out and you're just sort of like, maybe I could save this brush. You know, don't soak the whole handle and ferrule and everything you have in the alcohol to see what kind of glue they use. You're not testing their glue. You're just trying to get some paint out of your bristles. Yeah. If you do, however, unglue your ferrule, um, super glue can sometimes repair that. But remember, the alcohol will unbutt it again. But the alcohol will unbutt it. But I'm just saying. Yeah. Epoxies will. will... And, and, and you guys know me, man. I Sometimes when things have gone really wrong, wrong for a brush. Then... This brush has led a bad life. Now it's a scrumbly brush. Now it's my scrumbler. And and you actually go and search for these sometimes. I do. I do. And again, painting party places, sipping paints. Oh, I, I don't know if paint, how friendly painting with a twist or any of the companies are about this, but maybe like a locally owned, maybe a national. I don't know. But if they're throwing them out anyways, cause, because this is people come into a sipping paint and they all scrumble. Yeah. Right. That's like the default. And the brushes break down in a month. I'm sure yeah. if you've been to one, you're like, there's no way I could ever make this twig with this fl. <laughs> Do you love when you're at one of the places and they give you a fl? <laughs> and you're like, that is the thickest branch I've ever seen. I mean, brush pressure ain't going to fix that. I have been in a sip and paint, flipped the brush around to the point of the wood. Yeah. And been like, I'm just going to paint with the back of the brush because it's the only way I get a twig. Yep. Everyone around me was like, flip. <laughs> I need to do that too. Because sometimes you have to. But if, if, if you see that, you can be like, can I buy some of your brushes when you don't want them anymore? Mm -hmm. Don't paint with oil and then paint with acrylic. Brushes are, it's no. Don't do it. The oil is bad for the binding on the acrylic. Just don't mix those mediums up. Yeah. All right. We'll have a whole thing about painting oil over acrylic because what? You can't paint acrylic over oil. And there's a reason. Don't get that stuff in your paint. I remember Daniel talking about that. There's a whole thing on that. Yeah, if you ever want to just oh, no, see no. someone rant, just ask Daniel yeah, about painting acrylic over oils, and then he starts reciting poems and hopping all around the art store. It's awesome. <laughs> gets so upset. The only thing that upsets him more is suggesting that you should um, pour resin on your painting. It's the only thing that can get him more hopped up. <laughs> you, you could probably ask him about using uh, 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 um, Mod Podge as a varnish. I, I can't even imagine what... He would have a heart attack. <laughs> he would just have a heart attack and fall down at the art store. <laughs> Things to do when you're bored. Go by and mess with your local art expert. <laughs> <laughs> so, dear foot stipplers, listen. So, the ones... This one was okay. This was the, the Royal and Nickel one. I bought, you know, this whole set. Nothing else in it did I really want to use, but this one was okay. I do like these little rubber grips. Yeah. If you're having trouble gripping your brush because you have grip issues, there are things that you can buy online. Um, you can find them on Dick Blick for people who are differently abled. Yep. They have they have these little, they're kind of like the pencil grip, and you can put them on there to help you grip your brush. Yeah. And there are special brushes. Yes. Yeah. Long handles. Long handles. I've seen long handles this long. Seriously. Yeah. Don't do it. You're not that painter. You don't even want to be that painter. You don't want to be them. I've hung out with them. You don't want to be them. <laughs> those guys, oh those goodness. long handled brushes. They know who they are. I, I, you know what? I think you're starting something. This is, I, this is going to be. You know be, what? I think I can take them. 
I, I've, been, I've been in a couple of retreats. I think I can take them. This is going to be like a West Side Story thing. This where will be like, because they'll know, be like this. That's right. I thought you from over here. No. And they're going to have you by reach. <laughs> just alone. No, they're going to just barely be able to brush me because you can't have any control from back there. <laughs> it's like the brush throw down. Sometimes art smack talk is a hoot. Uh, you know. <laughs> if you don't actually mean it. Okay. I don't actually so, mean it. So before we go, before we get going, we gotta, okay. we're going to have to we're gonna recap a little bit. And okay. uh, I had a real quick question about glycerin. Yes. Uh, K- uh, Kelly's been using glycerin to reshape her brush. And what do you think about that for, for sizing and, and storing? Hmm. It's inert. It's inert? It's inert and washes out with water. So probably... And it doesn't harm paint. So it seems cheap and reasonable. Yeah. But it would require testing and research. Yeah. That would definitely be like testing and research. But there is a lady who became really rich by mixing two dish soaps for brush washer. You know, if you're just... if you just Back in the 70s. So I'm just saying, if you want to take an experiment and see if something works, uh, maybe you have the next invention if you have that's going to make a lot of money. Yeah. Well, if you have a little time and you're like, you want to know the scientific truth... Email Golden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ask they'll, Golden what they think of using glycerin as a sizing in your brush. They'll tell you like the, the like whether I, it's. A and good actually, idea if you guys ever ask Golden a question they can't answer, please copy me on that. I mean, because like, I need to be there everything. for that. They know. I mean, I need th- to they be research there. everything. Like human like, spit as a cleaning agent. They know it, it is. That's a conservancy cleaning agent. So if you get blood on your canvas, guess what? You're licking a Q-tip and cleaning it. Not a good brush. Okay. No, it is a good brush, actually. Angela Anderson has proved anything can be a brush. This is true. <laughs> Angela Anderson has proved that definitively. At one thirty, guys, she's going to be on live today. She's doing the finishing to this, and I have to give you a couple quests. Oh, yes. Okay, so before, before you give the quests, okay. last thing, can okay. you, you recap your, the brushes that you like and where you can get them? So that because everyone's like, what brushes do you use? Where do you get them? Okay. How can they? I am. I have. Okay. I was. I use Creative Mark. Uh huh. But right now, and you've seen me do it. I'm grabbing this number ten, Simply Simmons. If you can get it, please get it. Yeah. This is the number ten, Simply Simmons, bright, and it also says Plain Court, Plain Corto, and it says Rep Dom, and um, the number on the back is. Two five five three four one zero one zero. I don't know if that'll help you. And can we see the creative mark too? Yeah. And the creative marks, I like their short bristled. I gotta pull this out. This is ebony splendors. Yes. The long ones I don't like, but the short bristled ebony splendors I like. And the only time to get these, here's my feeling on when you get these, is when they're a dollar. Right. Because you can see that they don't hold up against me. So, so you know. You can see, like, look what I did here. So if you're, so. This is a number 18 bright. These are a little soft. I mean, I can get away with it. But you, you remember how yesterday I was, like, on this pointing out it wasn't really covering the canvas because of the softness. But this is also what I did to it. So I do like them. They're a good company. They're around forever. Um, but, oh, like, when they're on sale. Yeah. So, so these are your, the, the budget on sale. And where do you get those at? Um, Jerry's? I've seen I, Jerry's Art Rama. I've seen them on Amazon. I have not looked at Dick Blick lately to see what they're carrying. You can get Simply Simmons everywhere online. I just don't know that they ship everywhere. But I think the um, we got our Simply Simmons from Texas Art Supply. Yeah, and yeah. they were really great. So if you ever ch- have a chance to go to Texas, which is Art Mr. Supply. Art Online, yeah, isn't it? Yep, Mr. Art Online. Yeah, we 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 like Texas Art Supply. They have everything. They have brushes and brushes and brushes, and yeah. you should see our video. Literally, on that later. I cleaned them out. I bought brushes for my friends of these because yeah. I was like so happy. There's a line from this company that's called Micro Minis, and if you have the extra money and you love doing detail, tiny little fiddly detail that you're work, holding up? Simply Simmons. Okay. Right. So there's a line from Simply Simmons called Micro Minis. Um, there's good packs. I, you know, you know, I love the Creative Marks because I've given them away. Yep, we gave a but bunch. But check of the bristles. You still. It's the thing about I can't buy them online. You got to go touch them. Yeah. Because even when I don't go touch them, I get some soft brush. Then I'm like, ah. But when the bristles are short and they're interlocked and they're well done, they're fantastic. And that's what you want in your acrylic brush. Short bristles, interlocked, sharp edges, clean shaping, right? Mm-hmm. I am not, if you, you can do a wood handle that's coated if you're good about cleaning your brushes. I'm not. I probably should stop buying wood handles. Yes. 
joke. <laughs> I should. I should stop. Because, look, it's just a hot mess back here. It's, like, embarrassing. My mom teases me. Okay. You know, and I'm, I have a quest for you. Okay, now the quests. So it's here's your quest. I want you to go to whatever art store you have. If that's Walmart, it's Walmart. If it's Hobby Lobby or Michaels, it's Michaels. Whatever the local art store, just find your local art store and go feel some acrylic brushes. Pull the sizing out. Take them. Pull the sizing out and feel them. Mm -hmm. This should this should be able to push into your hand. Can I see stunt hands? Maybe you'll be able to describe this in a different way than me. What are you talking about? The pressure. I want to I want to see if you can have a different way. Come here. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna just see if another person feeling it can understand what I'm talking about, and maybe he can explain this in guy terms. So this is the the flick, the pressure. Feel the flick of that. All right. This would be wrong. He's going to take those. <laughs> he's thinking about it. I don't know what he's going to do. <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm going to think about it. He's going to think about it. So while he's thinking about that, maybe he can explain that. In some, sometimes when you hear somebody verbalize it differently, it helps bring it home. And I, and since I can't put the brush in your hand, like in this Helen Keller moment, and be like, feel it, feel it. Yeah. Hopefully we're going to be able to verbally describe it. Yeah. No, the, 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 uh, Simply Simmons one, the brush, the, the, uh, the fibers are stiffer and they pop back faster, and the, the other ones are, are much softer. You can just see that the, the fibers themselves are much more flexible, so that when when they uh, like when you just touch them, they bend they, they bend a little bit on that linear on that the linear impact. Whereas the the other ones are are much stiffer. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, that's a it's a complete. You're 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 right. The the ebony splendor feels more like a makeup brush but it's not all of their brushes that do that just that one just that one yeah so remember in the simply simmons when i was feeling through them i was putting some back yeah because the, the it wasn't right it was like goldilocks it really is like the three bears this one is too hard this one is too soft this one is just right huh and that's why i was i didn't grab just everything off of there because i don't do that anymore i don't grab everything off there even if it's on sale i gotta feel it right otherwise i just have a bunch of brushes even from brush lines that I love, right. you got to feel it and find out if that brush is just right for you. Mm -hmm. That is so important. So go to your art store and feel the brushes and see if you can start to feel that difference in stiffness. Yeah. And start to think about that. And then you're thinking about like, well, I need my, you know, one inch filbert, half inch filbert, quarter inch, my one inch bright, half inch bright. And you don't really need a wash. Uh -huh. Right. Uh, flats are better for the Donna Dewberry one stroke stuff where you're trying to double load a brush. Yeah. Because it's about the length of the bristles and the way it does long, crazy strokes. But you don't want that in acrylic. All right. And then you're going to want your three sizes of round. Mm -hmm. Try to think about like what kind of branch it would make. That's generally how I do it. And you want a teeny, teeny, tiny one. Yeah. And you want a half inch angle. Now, you can get other brushes past that. You can buy these fun packs. Just know the fun packs is probably there's two brushes in a fun pack you could use. Mm -hmm. The fun packs have two. That just seems to be what I find. Fun packs have like two that I could use, and then the rest are sort of decorative ornamental brushes that just make my studio look good. So it's like, are you buying studio decoration or are you buying tools? So feel them and know about them. And then the fun quest. Bonus mission. Bonus mission. We want brush action shots. So kind of like Elf on a Shelf. Yep. Your favorite brush. Yep. Or retired brush. Tell them about your ideas. Oh yeah. So we want we want to see brushes set up in like all their. You want to see you know like your retires that you know the, the brushes that have seen too much action that are now retired brushes. You know lounging out by the pool with maybe a drink, chilling out because you know they've seen too much action. You know or the you know the the brushes that are in you know they're in it. You know they're ready for paint. They're they're ready to go. They're 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 stored there. How you got your brushes? You know whatever they're doing. Your brush stories. Your brush stories. Your brushes have a secret life. They have they have personalities. This these brushes. This this guy, my Goldilocks, which John took. I got it. Oh, this number eight, like, it does not feel like my number ten at all. And it's a bright, a number eight it's, bright. They probably got shorter brussels. I, yeah, I know. It's just crazy. So like these two, they would have different party lives, wouldn't they? When they have different party lives. Well, it's look, look at this. It's just this is bound. This is so thick. In the binding, this one's had a total party. This is, 
<laughs> oh, this is a Windsor and Newton. This brush do not play. My mom usually keeps one of these around for varnish. <laughs> it was like expensive brush. Probably still have the price on here. It's really pricey. Twenty-seven dollars for this <laughs> brush. I see the tag. See, let's see if you can see it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it ended up. So he would have some stories. Once I was a beautiful brush in the art store, shining, <laughs> and then this woman abused me. So yeah, it just you guys are so funny and such a lot of fun, and um, we love the hearts and we're loving everything you're doing. So on Instagram, Twitter, but in Facebook, share with us your brush stories. If your brushes are having kind of an elf on the shelf moment. Yep. What are they let, doing? We let us know. know. We might, we're going to, if we get a bunch of them, we're going to do them on the next intro of the next quest. Well, yeah, you'll see those pictures. We'll post them up here. <laughs> we will do some, some stuff. So is this helpful? Does anybody have any questions before we go? I oh, actually thought this was going to be a we, 15 minute quest. I think we've covered most. There's a lot of questions that have been an being answered okay. and been answered. I think we've covered most of these. Do, I hope and you guys feel ready to buy brushes. Yeah, we're gonna put some, we're gonna we're gonna come back out here and we're gonna put some more updates in the comments and you know some information from this. Oh, to everyone who sent me like where they found the Simply Simmons number ten bright. Thank you. Yes. To the person that wrote Simply Simmons. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. We that love was you so guys. cool because <laughs> yeah. they were like, we are watching it. I'm like, I think about what I say now. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I probably won't think about what I say. I'll just say what I have to say. Good companies, wherever you live, please. Good companies that care that they have your business. One yes. thing that all the good companies, they may be all competitors. Yes. But one thing they all have in common is that they care that they have your business deeply. And if a company doesn't care that it has your business, I mean, if you, I, want, I, want to, I, want to I want you to think about this for a minute. This is a $3 brush, but this company cares if it has your business. Yeah. And yeah, they have all the way to a very expensive brush. I don't know what I would. I think that's probably a question I'll ask. What's your most expensive brush? They probably, you know, but they care about having you as a customer. Yeah. Big companies, Windsor and Newton's going to care if they have you as a customer. Some crazy off brand you never heard of does not care. So, whether it's an economy brush or a very expensive brush, as a consumer, you should be treated well. Yeah. I just, I feel that strongly. And your products should be backed by the company. So just make mm -hmm. sure wherever you live, you're buying from a company that that cares about your hard work. Mm. Oh, Valerie says that Jerry's Online has the Simply Simmons number 10 bright for $2.47. $2.47. So, so Valerie That's a good brush price. And under $5 is a good brush price. But well, you can see what I do to my brushes. But that's what it is for me. Can they get to be 150 Yes, they can. Now, Angela Anderson has something going on here next, right? Yes. What's Go over to Angela. She's going to paint um, a beautiful cherry blossom tree that matches this. Yes. Kind and of. Both kind of. It'll okay. go. It'll, they'll both look nice together in your house. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see. What else do we have? And that's Angela, Angela Fine Art, right? Mm-hmm. Angela Fine Art. And um, if you click her, click her name. And we'll have that linked in the iCard, of course. Yeah, I got to go back and put that in the iCard. I didn't even think about that. I put it in the iCard. The, the paint, this painting has her in the iCard and as a collaborator. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll put so, that up there. And that's part of the CAC hashtag event. So if you were to search uh, color of the year art, you'd see a whole bunch of art. My mom's dropped a video yep. for it, Sunset. So there's some good stuff out there that's happening right now. Pandemonium did a really cool one. Yeah. All right. So to recap. You got to freak out your your art store by going in and feeling all the brushes. Yeah, I don't know. Let me know how they react to that because I know I get some looks from the clerks. Yeah, tell them the Sherpa sent you. Yeah, go ahead. I don't care if they write me and like stop pulling the sizing out of the brushes. Well, I understand you have to ship them with sizing, but for me to buy it, I need to feel it. Yeah. So <laughs> now, uh, paint action shots. We want action shots. Action shots, and please go to your local art store and fill those brushes fill and send brushes. us action shots. Be funny. Yes. You guys are the funniest people in the world. I want to see the secret life of your brushes. Secret life. Secret life. Love you guys. Love you guys. See you with these really soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>